Because we never went before a judge. You were indicted, tried, and convicted in absentia. But that's not fair. We have a right to be heard. Pursuant to section 23, subsection 89, paragraph 765, subparagraph L, item 187 of the People's Statute Governing the Right to Due Process as amended in 1943, your case was reviewed and heard by the People's Tribunal. Your presence was not necessary. It would have not changed anything. In fact, it probably would have made matters worse for you. You are wicked evil people. <laughs> and you can talk? You who served Hitler? So what? I can still talk. Such <coughs> insolence. Love will conquer all. Bob is romantic garbage as a source of rational thought. It has no place in modern society and must be destroyed. The Lord loves you. Will you ever learn to follow the Great One as one of his disciples? How dare you say that? That is sedition. For he died in the fulfillment of prophecy in order to save the world. And so will you too, unless you repent for your sins. So be it. And for you, you don't know what you're saying. I love you, Hans. I love you too. So you two are in love? <coughs> How charming. However, let us remind you that according to Article 7, Section 6, Paragraph 3, Subsection 19, Subparagraph Q, Item 15, of the People's Statutes Governing the Operation of Institutes of Enlightenment and Free Education. Social intimacy of any kind is strictly prohibited and is a capital offense. Comrade Ephria, in your case, we have been willing to make an exception and grant you leniency if you would be willing to publicly renounce your beliefs and admit your guilt. Well, are you? Don't do it! Punish me instead! You, a martyr? Don't make us laugh. You're a Nazi. Do it! It doesn't matter. Nobody will know. We're all going to die here anyway. I don't want you to die, not on my account. But love is the way to salvation, don't you understand? This is why I give you bread. It was out of love. How can I deny that now? I can live knowing that I'd sent you to be death. What is it with you Nazis? Suddenly you're also caring and altruistic? Do you honestly think he's worth dying for? The scum that was part of the war that destroyed your family? Effie, you can't trust him. You are beginning to irritate us. One more outburst and I will silence you for good. Well, comrade, it's been four years and we're still waiting for your answer. All you have to do is confess. And this process will end. But make it snappy. You're not the only guest in this house. Comrade trustees, do with me what you want. And stop trying to put this on us. You cavorted with the enemy, gave them aid, comforted them, and even said you loved them. Now you decide what you want to do. The ways of the Lord are shrouded in mystery. All nonsense, nothing but talk. Why can't you admit that? I am guided by a higher power. I will not defend it or explain it because I cannot. You are a disgrace to the people and to our state. While the state cares for you and nurtures you, you go around spreading lies which erode public morale and aids our enemy, meaning you. The great one above is the source of all salvation. I am merely the messenger. I believe in you, I truly do. Are you willing to prove it? Yes. Then execute her. <coughs> that would be murder. You Germans murdered millions of Russians. What's one more dead Russian? I thought the war is over. And this has nothing to do with the war. If you love her, you will send her to her maker. Here, take my dagger. One quick thrust in the chest, and it will be done. Don't do it! Get just playing with you. This is no game. Bullshit me, pigs. Give me the knife, I'll do it. No, Hans and Effie are in love. It is between the two of them to settle this matter. What do you want me to do? The Lord created me, comforts me, and gives me hope. Well, Maxie, we're waiting. Hans slowly raises the dagger over his head and points directly at Effie. Ah! And scene <coughs> 10. Scene 11. Time, the present. Place, a classroom at a university. The professor is lecturing a class. Everyone on stage bearing striking resemblances to the characters in the story. On July 17, 1944, 
the Soviet Red Army paraded 60,000 German prisoners of war through the streets of Moscow. These prisoners, which included 19 generals, were part of Hitler's army that invaded the Soviet Union in 1941. They were captured in a battle that took place in Western Russia around the same time that the Allies were invading Northern France. They were put on display as a proof of the power and supremacy of the Red Army and the Soviet Union, which ironically no longer exists. The Soviet authorities filmed this parade. At one point, the camera shows a young woman, just a girl in fact, whose identity is still unknown, leaving the crowd of spectators and running into the procession and to give few of the prisoners what appears to be pieces of bread. The fate of the girl and the men who are the beneficiary of her kindness is unknown. What we do know is that most of the prisoners did not survive the internment. Whether they deserve to die, I will not say. I am not here to judge. Suffice it to say, however, that the Nazis started a war for which the German military and the German people paid a heavy price. But what that girl did took an incredible amount of courage. Maybe her goodwill was misplaced on those who did not deserve it. Maybe she had lost her mind and was acting out of some bizarre and pathetic fantasy. Or maybe she was using the prisoners to make a political point. But whatever her motivation, the essential humanity of her act remains intact. It came at a moment in time when such acts were considered treason and showed that despite all the barbarity, cruelty, brutality, injustice and oppression that is part of human history, there is still room for compassion and hope for humanity, which means for us. Amen. Amen.